and try to avoid the, I guess, emotional assumption that something's wrong. Because a lot of people thought they were growing because of their excellence a couple years ago, and it really was just they were riding a wave. And they spent money like they were entitled to spend money, and mm-hmm. they maybe made moves they shouldn't have made in their in their business or in their personal income, and now they're going, now they're crying the blues. And so know if you're riding a trend or know if it's actually because of some sort of dependable, sustainable thing that you're yep. doing. Welcome to the Maven Marketing Podcast. Today is Maven Monday. I'm Brandon Welch, and I'm joined today by Caleb Thermal Shirt or Urgy. 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 You can call me whatever. You know what? That's a nice thermal shirt, though. Yeah. You wear it well. I, I like it's warm. it. warm. It's that kind of a day here. It's a little bit chilly around here. This is the place where we answer your real-life marketing questions so you can eliminate waste in advertising, grow your business, and achieve the big dream. And hey, speaking of big dreams, yeah. big congratulations to our buddy Raj from North Carolina. He won a signed copy, hardcover, Oh, newly it's fresh. printed. It, smel- fresh. it smells mm. fresh. It looks fresh. It smells like marketing wisdom. It smells, <laughs> smells like wisdom. It smells like profit. Uh, signed copy, The Maven Marketer, and The Mystery Gift is not a mystery anymore, an OG Frank and Maven mug. Oh, yeah. These are in limited supply these yeah. days. They are- these are they, rare. These are the heavy duty. I, I don't know if you can see the thickness on this, but um, they are heavy. If you're listening to podcasts, you yeah. definitely can't see the thickness of the mug, we, but it probably weighs five pounds by itself somehow. So I, I was at a random fly in resort, like a fly fishing resort, but like this cool little cabin place you fly into remotely in mm-hmm, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And I found these mugs like 10 years ago and I thought they were the coolest things. And it took me like a whole year to track down who made them. And then mm-hmm. I had a run done for Frank and Maven. And they've been like the biggest hit. Yeah. Um, I awesome. got a text yesterday from somebody who got theirs like nine years ago. Still using it. Still using it. It's amazing. So you're going to get one of those, Raj. And you might get like, you know, a pen and a t-shirt. Yeah. And some other cool goody goods. So, yeah. hey, what are we talking about today? Hey, some companies are feeling like things are going great. Uh, and others may feel like things are a little bit down. Mm. And... Um, the key word in that sentence is feel. Feel. Mm. And so what we are going to try to do here this morning is help you make decisions, um, but base them on the truth, on the facts, and look at uh, some frameworks that we use to help diagnose uh, where where the reality is yes. in your trend, up or down. When somebody thinks, oh, we better get with a new marketing company, or we better focus on marketing, usually they're they're trying to like... change a trend in something. So instead of jumping onto the chaos wheel, we've called it over the years, like, and just saying, going right along with that, you know, intelligent business owners, like view of the world, we've learned that sometimes while they're very skilled at what they do, they need some guided processes to like really diagnose what the numbers mean, Mm -hmm. um, what the numbers actually are in some cases, um, because entrepreneurs are an emotional bunch. They that rocket fuel that drives them is also the rocket fuel that destroys them mm-hmm. um, if they don't focus in the right area. So we're going to give you some frameworks today. Uh, this is something we do quarterly and annually for our partner clients. And anybody who comes in our door, this is literally where it starts. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, I want to grow. It's like, no, what's reasonable? What, yeah. What's Are you growing? Um, what's possible in your industry? Like what are the factors behind what you've been doing? And so we have three parts. One is looking at the numbers that matter. Uh, Part two is finding out why the numbers are the way they are. And part three is what to do about them. We're going to cram that all in 45 minutes. We're going to do it. You ready? More or less. You ready to go? Let's go. Number one, part one, look at the numbers that matter. So sub point one, uh, (laughs) the first thing we're going to do when looking at the numbers that matter, um, we're going to say month over month is rarely a good comparison. Yes. It is very easy for a business owner to say, hey, things are looking up or things are looking down. And usually that is a feeling, again, feeling based on last week or last month. And the the big thing we want to look at is seasonality and trends of your business and the yes. truth behind the numbers there. Certainly if your business is less than five years old, this is a this is a thing. You just you f- sometimes your literal cash flow is tied to your lifestyle. Sometimes it's tied to your ability to, you know, pay, pay the vendors payroll. Or, or do payroll or whatever. And so yeah. when, when you're, when you don't have this maturity, you know, of somebody who's got a pile of cash or has been through, you know, every shape and size of problem in business, mm-hmm. it's very easy to be emotional about what's happening in the last 30, 60, 90 days. Yeah. 
we want to raise our eyebrows at mm-hmm. any major trends, but usually these are these are single digit ups or downs, and they're usually driven by things that aren't actually hardwired to the business's destiny, or maybe happen every year and yeah, you just seasonal. don't realize it. Which yes. leads us to number two: is look at year over year um, or multiple years. If you if you've been in business for five, yep. 10, 15 years, what we're going to look at is seasonality. Um, month over month, quarter after quarter, and we're going to compare kind of the trend because yeah, people, I don't know if you knew this, but people are predictable. People are very predictable creatures. They do very similar They want things. to go outside in the summer. Yep. They want to come inside in the winter. Mm-hmm. They want to buy long sleeve clothes in and fall. When it's cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they want to buy cars typically in the in the spring and summer. Yep. Uh, they want to sell toys and boats uh, in the winter when they're you know, sitting there doing nothing for them. And so, uh, guess what? Air conditioners seldom break in the middle of the winter. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? Uh, <laughs> never um, would have guessed. Roofs never leak when it's not when raining. It's not raining. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there, there's, there's some seasonality. And while you're going like, yeah, duh, but seriously, we hear it every mm-hmm. single week from somebody that's like, uh, ah, what's going on? And it's like, well, step one, always like the, as, as, if we're taking a call or if we're on an initial prospect, we're like literally already navigating to year-over-year traffic. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a Frank and Maven partner client, we're way ahead of this for you. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're doing this actively and we're seeing the trend probably before you, you know, bring it up sometimes. Yeah. But it, like that's literally where I would go. It's like I want to look at year-over-year um, numbers, year-over-year traffic, year-over-year profit, year-over-year um, – other factors, which is point number three, which is don't just look at the revenue. Don't just look at the revenue. Sometimes revenue is a really bad indicator because, um, not to skip ahead, but number four, maybe you'll have a really big outlier. Mm-hmm. Like last year, you had a, you know, multiple six figure sale, some deal of the year type thing that happened, and you just didn't have that this year. So we're looking at number of transactions mm-hmm. uh, just as equally as we do top line revenue because. Yeah. It could be a it could be a diagnosis of um, poor salesmanship mm-hmm. or changing market trends yeah. or sometimes um, uh, just inflation alone will either you know make your numbers look bigger than they were last year but your profits less yeah uh, there's a lot of factors that don't just you know make revenue the ultimate thing so yeah if we can we're looking at net profit if we can we're definitely looking at transaction numbers the average ticket price yeah. Did that go up or down? And then is your sales closing ratio to blame for that? Or is it truly a marker of intent? Yeah. And so what you want to do when you feel you're like, hey, things are going great or things are not so great. What you want to do is force yourself to get out of the emotional mode that you're in right in that moment mm-hmm. and stop and look at why am I feeling this? Mm-hmm. And what? How soon did this trend happen? And you're going to look back at maybe... August and September of this year, because you're feeling a change between those yes. those two months, and October is is over now. So we're looking at August, September, and October. And uh, what we, what you want to do is say, okay, uh, from August to September, there's a five percent decrease, and then from September to October, there's a five percent increase. Now go look at last year and look at those same relationships. Mm-hmm. Is is it is it normal to have that dip? in September and to see a rise back in October. Look at yes. the year prior to that and the year prior to that. And we're getting very, lo- very logistical about this, but it's so important. On your trend lines, your website traffic will almost always follow the revenue curve. Mm-hmm. Like it may be a slightly bit delayed because people are researching two or three weeks before they yeah. pull, but it's like, it's going to have the same flow to it. Um, so... And then do that same thing on well, your number I, of transactions. Yeah. Transactions, yep. Sales closing percentage. Um, and just make notes. Don't make any assumptions yet. We're going to get to the what to do about it here in just a second. But what I was going to say, if you can, um, especially with a weird um, roller coaster that, you know, even some pandemic and some like big market swings have had in the last mm-hmm. few years, if you can look at... Um, Last year, the year before, and the year before that, and say, okay, am I, is this the lowest year I've truly had in those trends? Because sometimes just being on a growth trend from like 2021 uh, or 2020, like mm-hmm. if you're on track with that year, like where you would have been growth trend wise, maybe you went super high, maybe you had a 30% you 
quote unquote growth year, <laughs> outlier yeah. year in 21 or 22. And it went back down to kind of average in 23 and 24 may just be on that, that plotted line. So not to get too much in the weeds for your filtering out outliers. We've talked about that. Just, just note, like, do we have any home run sales that are making these numbers yeah. look skewed? Take those out and just, and try to trend it with or without those. Mm-hmm. Um, five, uh, probably my, my favorite leveling question. Uh, every business has a maturity cycle. Mm-hmm. And it is very, very easy to launch and go from 0% market share to 5%. Like, yeah. Honestly, just by showing up and doing half the things right and being another vendor on the list, um, if your population is relatively healthy and it, you're, you know, you're relatively not saturated like mm-hmm. you'll get to five percent market share just by going through the motions yeah you'll definitely get to three right mm-hmm. and when i say market share I'm, t- I'm saying take all the business in your market your area your trade area and say what percentage of that am i getting a really easy way to do it is to say um is to look at employee counts mm-hmm. if somebody's market it, you know if somebody's market share is or sorry if somebody's employee count is 15 and yours is five, you probably got about a third of the what, size what they is, have. Right. Yeah. Um, so triple, just triple to get take their your numbers. best guess at what all your competitors are doing in revenue and then compare yours, divide that into it and you kind of get a, a percentage. Uh, there's a, there's a third party thing we're going to talk about in a second. You might be able to look at, but get it, get a feel for what your market share is. If you're, if you're at that five to 10% market share and you're going, wow, growth is slowing. It's because it should. Yeah. It gets way harder after you get past that double digit market share. Yeah. And the same is true. Um, it happens at different rates, but in your first year in business, uh, you're going to, you obviously have no history, but then your second year, it's very common to double, double your, pro- triple. you know, yeah, it's easy. double your revenue. And the, the third year, maybe you double it again, but the fourth year you're like, mm, things are slowing down. It's not yeah. because you're doing a worse job or anything. You're just maturing. And that's the, it's reflective of this curve that you would see. Unless if, if your business is, um, gosh, you know, more than five years old, um, you've got to be making some aggressive moves to continue double digit growth. Mm-hmm. Some, some exceptions there would be if your market is just growing, like your population is exploding, like kind of like it is in the Midwest or mm-hmm. some, some towns like that can happen. But you've got to be you've got to be riding some serious energy to continue multiple multiple years of double digit growth. Yeah, look at the look at the stock market. Look at all all these mm-hmm. massive companies. If they could pull it off, they would. Yeah. But you yes. see what maturity looks like and yeah. normal growth inside of an economy uh, levels out. Yeah. So we're measuring two things. We're measuring what was your year your year over year growth and what's that been? Has it been like you know? eight, nine, 10, and now you're at nine again, or maybe you're at seven and a half. It's like, what's reasonable? Because the the bigger you get, the, you know, obviously the harder it is to keep that double digit growth. And then also just know, this is just purely an experience thing. Um, Can't tell you it's scientific. I'm just telling you after doing this hundreds of times, um, when you get to that 10% market share, you got to be doing some really innovative things. You got to add different ways to sell and, and different ways for people to buy from you to get from that 10 to 20% market share. And mm. getting and getting past 30% market share, like you like one out of three people in your market are buying you instead of a competitor. Gosh, that's really, really tough. I can think yeah. of two clients we've ever that's ever been the case for. And it'd be hard to maintain, yeah. to continue to hold uh, as well. Yeah. You and really frankly have... they were yeah. Those are those are industries where you have to have some serious intellectual property and some like yeah. proprietary ways of doing things that nobody else can break through because otherwise you're ripe for disruption. Yeah, somebody so, else going to do it. Come take a bite. Yep. So review part one, looking at the numbers that matter. Yeah. We're going to probably ignore month over month or maybe even quarter over quarter. We're going to go quickly to year over year trends and maybe year over year over year and try to get the best average of like the last three to five years. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just kind of compare our revenues to that. Don't just look at revenue. Because inflation screws that up. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at transactions. We're going to look at average ticket price. We're going to look at sales close rates. If you're not tracking these things, start today. Yeah. Start today and do your best guess to compare them to you know the past years. But hopefully you're using a good CRM and, and accounting software that you can run some quick reports on these kinds yeah. of things. E- even just a just a plain old Excel sheet that said month to month, what was our appointments? What was our um, appointment set rate? What was our close rate? What was our revenue? What was our average sale? Just keeping that rolling. Um, our clients that are growing the 
most efficiently or doing things like that, mm-hmm. right? Um, filter out the outliers. Don't don't get all torn up about something that was too big to matter or too small to matter, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in years past. And then compare against your rate of growth and know that the bigger you get, the harder it will be to compare to um, keep that same rate of growth without some extreme moves. Yep. So certainly if you're past that 10% market share number, we've gathered the facts and we've put them all together. Um, you probably cannot help yourself, but make some assumptions at this point. You're mm-hmm. seeing some trends, you're seeing some things happen up, down, about the same. And now what we want to do is find out why, why are we seeing what we're seeing in these numbers? Um, and, and try to avoid the, <laughs> the, I guess, emotional assumption that something's wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or I'm doing, it could be both. It could be hubris. could be, I'm doing everything right. That's why I'm growing. Because a lot of people thought they were growing because of their excellence a couple of years ago. And it really was just, they were riding a wave. Yeah. And they spent money like they were entitled to spend money. And mm-hmm. they maybe, you know, made moves they shouldn't have made in their, in their business or in their personal income. And now they're going, now they're crying the blues. So yeah. find out why. And so know if you're riding a trend. Or know if it's actually because of some sort of actual dependable, sustainable thing that you're yeah. doing. So what we're going to do is just systematically look at uh, really outside of the spreadsheet you just made, outside factors that so you can't see in a spreadsheet, but you will be able to research and know um, whether these things have changed. So first thing to find out why or is figure out what major changes have you made in marketing and sales. So mm. that could look like budget. Have you made any big changes in adding or removing medias? Have you changed your strategy? Have you changed your messaging? Yeah. Um, and not just not just this year, but like that's that's probably Harvard says that that's a, an eighteen to a thirty six month window, like a lag like you're, measure. You're paying for moves you made last year, two and three years ago. Sometimes, yeah. uh, at least at least up to two years ago. Yeah. So now now. They could also be shorter term, like you're a star salesman goes, and that's an immediate hit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you change your phone scripts, or you stop being open on Saturdays, or you stop offering some sort of product, or you stop going to some market, or 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 you know the inverse of that, you start doing those things better. Those can have immediate effects. Yeah, but just know that your scope of like looking out as what has changed shouldn't just be last month. Like right? mm-hmm. it should be, you know. A year and two years ago. Um, so what did you change in your marketing plan? My favorite thing that happens is when people made a budget change a year ago and then like 12, 18 months go by and they're like, holy crap, we've grown a lot. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you had the courage to start investing in tomorrow's customer way that's back right. then. Yeah. That's right. Um, so shout out to basically every Frank and Maven client. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what's happened to them. Yep. And uh, so you want to look at these things and notate them. Mm-hmm. You're you're really aligning this with different moments on that spreadsheet we just built about your your financials. Yes. And then you want to say, oh well, we did check hired an all star salesperson at this point. Yes. That might account for okay. So you're starting to make acknowledgments of what might have caused some of these yeah. curves. And the real goal is for year to year, um, for the amount of people you're reaching in that tomorrow category to never have changed. Mm-hmm. You might change, you might trade one, you know, TV station for another or sometimes a whole media for another or ad media, but you don't want that total number of people influenced to go down. Yeah. So um look very, very closely. This is often overlooked. Was I making more aggressive offers? Was I showing up at home shows or trade shows or community events better a year ago than I am now? Mm-hmm. Um uh, was did I have a change in my phone staff? Am I answering the phones differently? Uh, did my sales staff change and did my follow up process change? Sometimes talent just either gets tired, or our processes change, or we, somebody gets promoted or somebody leaves, and mm-hmm. we don't look at those as like the big, yeah, like catalysts, to, yeah. to our overall even business growth. Even just strong uh, sales management can change, and that's actually a slow. You feel that slowly drift throughout the throughout the year. You may not feel that immediately, but if they've right. lost the spark and the fire inside of them, um, that will slowly taper off as time goes on and they need to be relit. Yes, sir. So. Yeah. All right. So what major changes have been, happened in sales and marketing? Uh, here's the next one. This is 
often overlooked. What are your major competitors doing? Hmm. So if you haven't done those things, if nothing's changed in your world, have they put their foot on the gas pedal? Have they been more strategic than you? Yeah. Um, are they hiring or firing? This is an unlooked um, signal. But if you go on Indeed right now and your competitors have more ads, like recruiting for people than you do, they've got a different appetite and different strategy. And you need to be expecting that that affects you in the next six to 18 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's a really good thing to just keep your eye out on. Yeah, that's great. Or, or delegate a, you know, one of your team members to weekly just say, how many ads do our competitors have out? Like our top three to five. And I don't ever want you to get emotional about chasing your competitors, but you need mm-hmm. to go, what's going on there? Yeah. And in some industries that are supply driven, like I'm thinking of my contractors, you guys all drive to the same depot in town to get your <laughs> lumber and your lumber or your shingles or your whatever. Yeah. Um, dude, talk to your reps. Hey, what mm-hmm. are you seeing? Who just got fired? Who, mm-hmm. Who's hiring? Like there's, there's a, there's a word on the street um, and sometimes your vendors and your, you know, partners can kind of give you a kind of a macro overview of that. Um, when you see your competitors adding new offices, I'm thinking about my lawyers and my doctors. Like when you see that expanding, you know, there's a competitive force coming from you and they're, they're, they're scooping up market share. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why you are, maybe you're the one that's done that. Uh, or maybe that's why, you, you know, you are, or aren't growing. Um, and then noise in the marketing channel. Mm-hmm. What are the signals for those? Yeah, I think you can you can check on some like Google search like SEM Rush. Um that's a tool. Just go to SEMrush.com. Um it's, it's not going to work at a really small yeah. level, but if you are a regional business, you can go and say, hey, are these how guys much running? am I spending compared to my competitors? Or just good old fashioned Google ads or talk to your Google ads nerd and say, what are the uh, what are the auction insights? You can tell um, who is essentially spending more money than yeah. you are. Pay attention. I mean, when you're driving around, look for billboards, listen yeah. to the radio, watch TV, watch the Facebook ads. You're probably, if you're in your industry, you're probably a target for the ads yes. of your competitors. It's actually one of the clues that you're growing is that competitors start knocking you off. Clue mm-hmm. number seven uh, in tomorrow marketing is if somebody starts chasing and doing more noise, that means you've probably put a little more pressure on them than they like. And so they're saying yes to those advertising proposals and they're making more noise than they used to. Yep. Um, this is, um, you need to find a trusted media rep. Often a TV or radio station will have what's known as a Kantar media report. And it's essentially a service that measures what different advertisers are spending. Mm -hmm. And it's a relative number. It's not exact, but they're going to be able to tell you, Hey, starting, you know, January this year over last year did so-and-so competitor spend more than you or who was the most aggressive voice. Yeah. Uh, Kantar media. You just need to ask a local TV or radio rep. Some will have it, some will not. Yeah. What I want, what I want to emphasize here on the competitors, um, it's, what is it? Uh, losers focus on winners and winners focus on winning. winning. Is that how it's the quote yeah, goes? Loser, it's, yeah. Losers focus on competitors. On, winners focus on winning. So yeah, I like want to make sure this is like a healthy awareness. This is like, I'm, I'm aware of what's going on, but I also know I'm doing my own thing and I'm not getting distracted by all of this. So look out business owner. This is where your emotions can show up and maybe what should be a very Absolutely. logical thought process. What they are doing, if they're making more noise, they could be making bad decisions yes. just as much as they're making good decisions. If they're hiring more people to put on payroll, that could be a poor decision. It's just an indication of what's yes. going on and what they're thinking. We have more business or we're going to have more business, so we're going to do this. Yes. And Or they're laying people off. We have less business, so we need to do this. You o- can't know exactly their- Often we'll see that in search engines. They'll be like, they'll tell their search engine person, double or triple the budget, and they'll kind of start a bidding war. And the, the, the person, that, the owner or the marketing person that said that didn't realize that they were, when you double search budgets that quickly, often you're begging for unprofitability just mm-hmm. because it jacks up so many things. And so we'll see in a month where a client got a way less impression share because somebody was outbidding and we're like, you know what, we're going to wait that out because next 30 to 45 days, yeah. they're going to be yelling at somebody about how much they spent and how much they didn't get for wasted. that. Wasted. Yep. Wasted money. So sometimes it's, sometimes it's, a, it's just wait and see. Yes. But if you're going, hey, that was a good offer, be humble enough to go, man, they're beating me there. They did that and well. I need to level up my game. Yep. That's good. So 
Okay, so next we're going to, we're still trying to find out why the numbers are the way they are. We're looking at industry trends. So we've got a few different ways to look at that. First, Google search trends. I don't know if you know this, but there's an interesting tool out there called Google Trend Search or whatever they call it. Um, and it's the Maybe Marketing Podcast trending, do you think? It's, uh, it's I don't know, we could check it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trends.google.com, or you can just, you know, Google it. Um, if you type in something like new whatever you sell, new roof, new windows, uh, or new cars, estate plans, estate or, plans yeah, or, yeah. or, um, or something company, right? Roofing company, window company, yeah. advertising company, right? Type those in and r hit the search, switch the date range. It's going to start with like s last seven days. That yeah. is, that's nothing. R switch it to 12 months. And what you're going to look at is the curve yep. of the intent. This is what you're measuring of everybody in America who has decided they need new whatever you're selling. Yes. And then after you do that, so run a couple of those searches at 12 months. After you do that, switch it to five years. Yes. And you can watch the curve go over and over and over again. Pay attention to the bumps in the road. Yes. That, I will guess, is where your bumps will also show up. Yes. But 90 and 180 days before those bumps, that's when you need to actually be the most aggressive. Mm -hmm. Like when business is down, that's when you that's when you pull. Like mm -hmm. that's when you go put seeds in the ground because every person who's ever made money in the stock market knows they make it on the buy. On the buy not when it's the down. Sell. They buy yeah. you buy when it's down. That's like a uh, Warren Buffett says, I love it when the stock market goes down because I get to go buy a bunch of companies at a discount. That's and right. so that's your time to buy human influence at a discount because most people are chicken little thinking the sky's falling and they're pulling back of those things. You want to zig while they zag. Yep. And you're not going to do that because you're looking at this in a smart way. Yes. So pay attention to that. You can also, the data is not as strong, but you can also click on your state and, mm. uh, and see those it's same true. trends. Um, it's just a little bumpy. It's not as smooth. So the national trends are a little bit yeah. easier if to look at. If you're in a at. market that's over you know, a couple of million people, you'll probably get some reliable data there. If you have a Google search partner who's running Google search ads, you can also look at your impression share and impression count. Yes. Uh, we won't get into the weeds of that, but you could quickly look at those to indicate uh, intent. All we're trying to figure out is, are people in the market for what you're selling yes. at a similar or different and, rate than they and were? It will tell a clear story. And if you're, if you're a little bit down and you're going, oh, but my industry is being searched less because, I don't know, maybe it's an election year or mm -hmm. maybe... They bought an abundance of that product two years ago, and so there's less people in the market. Like that is some really, really reliable data. Mm -hmm. Everybody will give a clue on a search engine. Like the, the whole of humanity will give a clue as to what they're about to do. Yeah, that's big and data. That, that's big data. It's so, good for you. Uh, second thing is look at industry data. So no matter if you're, um, you know, professional or uh, tradesmen or anything, there is somebody who's gathered all of the people that look like you in the world. And they've done the polls and they've pulled the data to where you know, even by region, how everybody else is doing. Now, hopefully, you're like my friend Steve and you're like my friends um, and the window businesses and, yep. and you have a group that you actually meet with regularly. Yeah. Right? Um, where you are like very, very often comparing your trends and what's going on. Like you need a peer network. Mm -hmm. uh, Vistage is an awesome yeah. thing to look into as well. Just, you know get together with a bunch of other CEOs. So, but let's say you don't have that and you want to, you want to just kind of do this from scratch, uh, find the trade, you know, association for your industry and they've put out a report and they've mm -hmm. put out blog articles and they've probably got a podcast and they've probably got YouTube content and just get a feel for what's going on. Mm -hmm. A big takeaway here. It's not that we settle and it's not that we go, Oh, everybody's down. So I'm going to be down too. It's Okay. How, how well? Hopefully, we're not ever emotional about it. But how how aggressively do I need to react to this? Mm -hmm. Because if your industry is climbing, 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 and you're flat, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Somebody is stealing your lunch. And mm -hmm. You need to find out who. Go back to uh, the last point and, and figure out who's eating your lunch, who's making more noise than you, who's been a more courageous marketer, and be humble enough to go. Who maybe has the better product? Maybe mm -hmm. who has better reviews? Who's got the mojo? Right? Mm -hmm. Because that's a that's a backup and strategically reposition and go, how am I going to win against this big bad wolf? Mm -hmm. um, or what am I going to do differently to take this, the scraps or the inverse? But if your industry is down and mm -hmm. you are 
down, you go, okay, better. Actually, that's probably better news because um, a rise is coming, right? There's a, there's a wave coming, and you just need to be prepared to jump on it and be ahead of the market when it decides to come back. That's right. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, go look for those. Uh, talk to, a lot of times, um, big suppliers and yes. financial partners. Uh, they have a vested interest in knowing how um, your market is trending. And so they have big research out there and they usually can provide you some good numbers. We have so. a, we have a client that sells a really well-known national product. It's a, it's an outdoor product. It's a big, big brand. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they, ha- so they have a retail store that does this and they happen to also be the distributor that hooks up like the other 250 dealers of this product. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the Midwest. Yeah. And so anytime like there's something up or down, we're like, how, how are the other 250 doing? And we know when they're, Good or bad, we know when we're you know beating that trend that we're we're on the we're on the edge of excellence there. So yeah. Um. So worldwide trends. Hey, is there a war going on? Um. Do people want to basically walk around killing each other uh, every day? <laughs> Are people just generally pissed off and anxious? Yeah, that might have something to do with it. Yeah. Is it literally? Is it, has it been raining, or mm. has it been the sun shining outside? <laughs> Everybody knows. Sell more when it's not raining. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times there's this, there's this website that looks at historical weather and kind of back to the very first point, (laughs) uh, a home improvement client usually will be like, gosh, I was killing it last March and it's been crickets, you know, this March. I'm like, I'm literally Googling like weather trends. I'm going, well, do you remember when it was like either super rainy or super, depending on what they sell? Yeah. And it's like. Oh yeah, and I'm I'm not even kidding you. Hundreds of times I've lined up a spike in web traffic, sales appointments, and revenue to the exact same like rainy Weather or patterns. sunny yeah. sunny for- forecast. So yep. that's a thing. Um, and all that means is it's coming. Yeah, dude, it's gonna rain. It it will. The sun will come out tomorrow, and the rain will come out tomorrow too. I feel right? like you're about to start singing. So um, yeah, elections. I yeah. could mark, I could go look at my phone records over yeah. the last 15 years and clients would call, you know, beginning of October and be like, it's getting weird. Uh-huh. And I'd be like, yep. Remember two years ago when this happened? I remember four years ago when it yep. really happened? Yep. Yep. Same thing. If you've been around for eight or four, or you can go look at the last presidential election cycle, see how you trended. When did it, did it usually, you you know, people <laughs> dip a little bit earlier yep. that year. Um when does it start happening? So you yep. can be prepared. Uh, okay. So the last and final point, this is the best. This is my favorite part, right? There's something in it for you. Um, what do I do about it? I just gathered all this information. I looked at my trends. I looked at the real numbers of my revenue and my transactions. I'm comparing it not weeks over weeks or months over months. I'm looking at year over year. And then I looked at the world around me and I looked at the industries. I looked at um, the, the search trends. I looked at um, what everybody's projecting that we're doing. And so we I have, have a sober view. I have a, I have a very real yeah. view of, of what's going on. Um, now the question is, what do I do about it? Help me out, Brandon. Number one, no matter what, good or bad, and I would have to actually emphasize the next time it gets really, really good for you, remember this one point. You need to have staying power, mm. okay? The companies that stand the test of time are the ones that put back for the winter, and don't spend like crazy during the summer, right? They're just, they're reasonable. And I don't care who you got to listen to. Uh, Dave Ramsey's stuff is excellent for uh, entree leadership. Um, but find any skilled, like listen to your CPA. Like <laughs> you want, uh, I think, a minimum of six months operating cash in the bank. Yeah. And you are going to get through any storm. You're going to be able to buy a competitor who's going out of business because they didn't do this. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to invest in new technology or the most talented people, you're going to be able to um, zig while everybody else is zagging. So no matter what, the biggest rule I can say is have staying power. And frankly, if I can be just like super honest with you, from a consulting firm, we do this stuff for free. Like we Mm -hmm. always, always, always wake up wanting to make entrepreneurs better. We will never stop doing that. We're not too good for that. That will always be our mission until we are no longer around. Mm -hmm. But the companies we decide to hitch our wagon to, meaning the ones that we are like, yes, we can enter in a partnership where we're helping you grow your company. We do not 
do that if this company, we get a sense that they don't have staying power. Mm -hmm. If they are trying to swing for the fences to save against something, we'll bail out of that every single time and we'll say, come back to us when you have staying power. That's right. Um, That's not because we're too good. That's just because to do things right and to do things where it's, where it's not a, you know, glorified gamble. Yeah. You have to have a safety net. Yeah. And that, because the alternative is you make decisions out of fear. When you don't have cash is king and when you don't have cash on hand, you will make your decisions based on, I have payroll next Friday. Yep. And that will affect everything you do and say for the next week and a half. And so what you have to do is have that staying power and that maturity in your business to To be steady and confident instead of emotional, scared and flighty. Yep. So I would rather see you shrink. I'd rather see you politely exit, you know, people out of your company and get lean and mean. And then snowball that to a staying power force. Okay. We've yep. said said that about staying powers. That's step one, always. Step two, always be earning tomorrow's customer. Yes. You have to have step one before you can do step two, because step two requires that you have a little bit of staying power. Mm-hmm. And so everybody right now, like I'm thinking of the industries that measure their progress, like the automotive industry, every 30 days, they freak out if they didn't have a, a, a this month wasn't as good as last month. Mm-hmm. And they never... Never look quite further. commit to yeah. here today, here tomorrow, here when you need us. But guess mm-hmm. what? The public, all research says that the public wants to buy the company who's here today, here tomorrow, here when you need us. Mm-hmm. And to be the company who's here today, here tomorrow, here when you need us, you have to have the budget, the mentality, the emotional like fortitude to say, I'm a partner, not a vendor. Mm-hmm. I want to be purchased for quality, commitment, relationships with you and your family instead mm-hmm. of my today's price. Yep. And to do that, you have to always be telling a story. And that yes. requires some media and or some some um customer experience excellence. Yeah. Like you just have to always be thinking what's the right thing to do, what's the best thing to do, not what grabs me the money yeah. today. Because when you have the staying power, you know, I'm not going out of business next month and I'm going to market like I'm not going out of business yes. next month. I'm thinking 10 years down the road, thinking guess what? 5 years down right, the road. Right right now there is a gazillion people walking around going, oh, I don't know what I should do. I don't know what I should I don't, do. I don't literally, I, do. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow yeah. is election day. Yeah. Hey, it's November 4th and <laughs> congratulations. We're yeah. almost through it kind of. Um, but, but yeah, there's, and so, and so the companies that are reacting to that, I, I can think of some people that have called me that are 30% down, not, not our clients, but like some of them I'm going, yeah, I, you know, it's going to come back. Mm-hmm. But, um, that's the time you want to be building tomorrow's customer because when the public comes out of that storm, they go, ah, that was the committed competitor all along. Yes. That was the provider I needed to know and trust. Yeah. We have some clients who are up maybe a smaller amount than they were in previous years, but their market, their industry, so they look at these trends, yeah. is supposed to be down 16%. Yeah. But they're up 7% this year and they're saying, I look at the delta between those two. Yeah. That is up a lot more than 6%. Yeah. and then. The benefit of that, because it all comes around Mm -hmm. after maybe if it's because of the election season or because of an economic trend, you see a big difference next year. As soon as that headwind subsides, and it will subside, Mm -hmm. they're going to slingshot to the freaking moon. That's right. While their other competitors are just trying to start the engine back, they're, man, they're on the highway already going. These guys are already talking to somebody daily, every day. Yep. Okay. Third. So have staying power, always be earning tomorrow's customer, and three, do not be afraid to make a wild offer out of nowhere to jolt something, okay? Mm-hmm. Just because you're buying tomorrow's customer doesn't mean you can't have a little fun, mm. doesn't mean you can't be crazy. Now, do this sparingly. Go watch last week's episode about how to cash in on your brand equity that you built, the tomorrow customer you built. But dude, sometimes people just need a reason to buy. Yeah. And when it ain't raining, they don't need to, <laughs> they don't need to buy a roof. And and when you know, every news outlet in the world is telling them that the world's about to end. They don't need to buy a freaking barbecue grill. But if you give them a big enough reason, that's right, they will do it. Yeah. And I'm not suggesting that you stay in that and ever in that low profit mentality, but I am saying sometimes you need to shake some stuff up. Mm-hmm. You need to throw a stick of dynamite in that, you know, pile of logs to get the river moving. Mm-hmm. Was that that was a lumberjack analogy yeah, for all uh, the other flannel wearers out there. Bring it on. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I think, I think when you do that, um, just don't get stuck in that, in that mode, Re- realize when it's time to be done and just acknowledge that this is just for a season. We're going to do it and we're going to get out and then we're going to continue commit, 
committed to our tomorrow customers. Yes. So last thing, and this is a special, special, special offer for you. We've never done this, not one single time in almost two years of doing this podcast. Mm-hmm. Say almost two years. It's like it's like one point seven years, but hey. We'll take it. We'll Rounding up. We'll round it up. If if you're looking at all this and going, man, I know something's off. I know I have an opportunity and you're not quite sure what moves to make in the noise department and the marketing and strategy department. Get with a pro. Like the most valuable thing you could have is an outside set of eyes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Somebody who will look at these trends and go, yep, I've seen that before. This is what to do next. And yep, this is who you are. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are. Let me, tell, let me help you tell that story to the world. Get with somebody who's skilled at doing that. Um, and if you don't have that person, mm-hmm. Caleb and I are going to lend our team to you. If you were one of the th- uh, first three people to send us an email saying, give me a marketing audit. Um, We charge thousands of dollars for this service, okay? I'm going to give three of them away on this podcast. And uh, it will be, all all it's going to take of you is your time. There will be no sales pitch, uh, nothing like that. But we will sit down for the hours it takes to go through this properly. We'll give you a proper consult between now and the end of the year. And you will leave with some Definitely some clarity. Um, we believe uh, the plan that we give you will work and lead you to a very, very profitable 2025 and That's beyond. Right. Yeah. And uh, it would just be our joy to give that to you guys as a gift. Mm-hmm. And all you need to do is send an email to Maven Monday at frankandmaven.com and say, give me the free marketing audit. Please. Please. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> you can say Please. it. You can yeah. say it however you want. Yeah. You, can, you can give it an exclamation mark. Yeah. So, so excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would... That's going to be a blast. We'd love to talk to you. Um, if you're in town, we'll have you. We'll have you by. Otherwise, we'll hop on a on a call and yeah, make it happen. And hey, if you're if you're a media rep like Raj, and by the way, if you're in the North Carolina area and you need some billboards, hit up our buddy Raj. Yeah, Raj, Raj. I think it's yeah, Raj. Yep, yep. You got it. Uh, but if you're a media rep and you want us to do this for one of your clients, um, literally no strings attached. Uh, or if you want us to walk you through this so you can do it for one of your clients. Maybe that would be even better, so you can be the pro and the hero. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll we'll throw that in as part of the offer too. So, yeah. Anything else to add? I think that's it. What a monster episode! Yeah, I think just anytime you feel like you're being led by your emotions, mm. pause for a moment, take a breath, talk to somebody you trust to check check yourself, mm. and then go through this process and make sure that you're looking at the world objectively. We usually do it mostly in the in the negative space, but it's actually just as important to do it in the positive space. When you have a big growth year, to Amen. not yeah. not be living high and mighty, it's That's the, um, the what's the quote? Um, times of um, hard times create good men. Yeah, this is the one. No, but you go okay, for it. Sorry, do your quote first. I'll I'm get sorry. Mine. We're taking extra time, but hard okay. times create good men. Uh, good men, cr- or sorry. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Mm, that's and good. The cycle repeats, right? Yeah. So I think I think uh, I think we're at a point of potentially suffering. Yeah. From the good times that strong men have made. Yeah, I think the quote I have is: um, "Times of poverty always follow times of misused abundance." Oh, that's even better. So. Be careful when you have a time of abundance, because if you misuse it, the down comes real fast. So, um, yeah, that's it. Hallelujah. Amen. You guys are going to do wonderful. We can't wait to talk to the three of you that reach out for the free marketing audit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be back here every week answering your real-life marketing questions, because marketers who can't teach you why are just a fancy lie. Have a great week. 